Just as self-awareness naturally leads to self-management, empathy naturally leads to our final component of emotional intelligence, and that's social skills and positive influence. In this final segment, you're going to see how positive influence, effectively utilized by managers and leaders, allows them to gain commitment from employees as opposed to compliance only. So the last thing we want to talk about is influence, power, and social skills. And some of you have seen this from me, but, but it's certainly worthy of, of repeating. People with emotional intelligence are receptive to other people's emotions, and they put themselves in, the, in, in other people's shoes. So they understand that they can have a relationship, despite seeming uh, uh, insurmountable differences, they can develop relationships with other people. Okay? And because of this, they are collaborative, they build bonds, they build trust, and they have influence other, uh, uh, over other people. Okay, from Lincoln here, if you can convert a man to your cause, you must first convince him you are his friend. You convince someone that you're their friend by actually being friendly, okay, by building those bonds and collaboration with them. Okay? And then uh, uh, something I use very often in my trainings with people, we will work harder and more effectively for people we like, and we like them in direct proportion to how they make us feel. So the question I always ask leaders that we're developing in our training, how do you make your staff feel? How do you make them feel about their jobs? Or do they feel appreciated? Do they feel like people know them as a person and not just a position? Do they feel like their work is important and significant and, and meaningful? Um, because the leader that does that is going to have better followership. There's just no question. They're going to have more influence over people. Okay. So French and Raven, five sources of influence that, that, that we've seen. And, and if you've ever taken a management class, you've seen these, right? Reward power, coercive power, legitimate power. Reward power is you've got influence over people because you control rewards. Raises, good uh, evaluations, uh, speaking highly of them to the boss. Coercive power is the opposite. You've got power over people because you can punish them. You can withhold rewards, right? This two go kind of hand in hand. Uh, legitimate power is you've got power over people simply because we both agree that you are higher on the organizational chart. We look at the chart, you're higher, therefore when you say something I'm like, oh, I better listen because even though they might not be my direct boss, although that's included with legitimate power, um, they're higher on the org chart. Okay? The second you and I are promoted to a supervisory position, we are handed these sources of power okay? in various forms and fashions, but we are handed these sources of power. Okay? Um, then there's expert power and referent power. Expert power is you've got credibility and influence over people um, because you are such an expert. You've got such a knowledge base that when you speak, people listen. And I always give the example of Lamborghini, um, the Lamborghini, the guy behind the cars in World War II. He was off an island in Greece with the Italian army, and they uh, shipped a manual on how to fix tanks and jeeps. Lamborghini received this manual. He memorized it and burned it which sounds really psychotic right, and unpatriotic, but he did this because he knew he would be, have expert power over people and he would be indispensable because he's the only dude that knew how to fix the Jeeps and the tanks. Right? So we're like, well, let's not send Lamborghini to the front lines. We can't lose him. Okay, that, that's, that's expert power. And finally, referent power is a little more hard to define, a little harder to describe. But we might call it likability identifying with someone, wanting to please someone because of who they are. Maybe, and this is a dangerous term, maybe we might call it charisma, um, but simply, but I like the term likability more because we like people, according to Cousas and Posner, in direct proportion to how they make us feel. What are the feelings of your staff? What, what feelings do they have? Okay? It is leadership. People that, that, that relies on expert power and referent power. And by the way, this is, this is demonstrated with clear data, okay? So if I'm trying to influence you, there are three general outcomes that you can give me, right? You can resist. So I want you to improve your performance. You can either actively say, no, forget you, Dan, I'm not going to do it. Or you can say, oh, yeah, sure, Dan, I'm going to do that, and then dig in your heels. I think we actually have some employees uh, across the state, and I, I suspect you manage some of you manage these types of employees. Okay? I wouldn't say it's a majority. I think the majority fit in the next category. That's compliance. The employee is willing to carry out the request. Yeah, I'll do my job, whatever's in my performance plan, but I'm not going to do any more of that, any, any more than that. Okay? You can ask me to do more. I'm not going to do it. In fact, I'm going to do just enough for you to not fire me. Okay? Um, I, I, I'm fearful sometimes that we have many, many employees that fit in this category. What we're hoping for and what is ideal, of course, is commitment. The employee identifies with the purpose, 
of, of, of their, their job and the person, in this case the supervisor, making the request. The employee is engaged, and that's critical, and wants the request to succeed. This is when we have employees that are engaged in what they're doing. They, they give discretionary effort. They're like, yeah, I'm going to give everything I can to this job because I know that it matters. And because, just as importantly with emotional intelligence, because I matter to these people, right? Well, here's the evidence. Supervisors and leaders that rely on coercive power, reward power, and legitimate power get somewhere between resistance and, at best, at best, compliance. Whereas people that rely on expert and referent power, they're the ones getting commitment. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give commitment to my boss because they've got, they've got so much credibility. I know what, she, I, I know that she knows what she's talking about. Okay, or there's that likability, that that referent power. They've got that influence, and that's a key part of emotional intelligence. You you let them have their feelings. You have your own feelings, so you have that likability. So, um, what is who does Dale Carnegie? Uh, who is Dale Carnegie, and how does he say we should increase our influence over people? Well, Dale Carnegie wrote a book in 1936 called How to Win Friends and Influence People, and it was just based on his experiences. Now, this book is, is, is a bestseller, you know, and it's been sold millions and millions and millions of copies. But recently, uh, Leadership Quarterly um, did a study. Someone did a study in there and said, you know, this isn't just anecdotal, but Carnegie was right. These are, and these aren't all the ways that he gave, but here, here are some, uh, I think, some simple ways that you and I as supervisors, as leaders, can influence our referent power and therefore increase our social skills, that important part of emotional intelligence. Effusive, genuine praise, real praise, sincere praise, not glad handing. Have a positive attitude because there is emotional contagion. We like to be around people that are positive. Um, care enough to remember. When someone tells you something important about themselves, remember it. Okay, put it in the old memory bank. And if you're not good at this naturally, write it down. Um, have a sense of humor. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to be the class clown, um, okay, or a comedian. It means though you have to have a, an appreciation for when other people are funny and the humorous in life, and be self-deprecating. Be able to make fun of yourself, okay, especially when you've got power over people. Make fun of yourself, okay? Make your, bring yourself down to, to, to their level, so to speak. Similarly, about bringing ourselves down to a realistic level, admit when we're wrong. Admit when we uh, when we've made a mistake. Okay, try to make others look good. Is look if, if they're struggling with something, or, or or they've made a mistake, don't embarrass them. Don't make them seem silly or make it worse by you know by exacerbating it. But you know, identify with them and tell them about the time you made a mistake. Okay, or or, or relate to them and say, you know what, I, I struggled with this new computer program as well. Okay, uh, avoid arguments, but not important conversations. That is, be be assertive. Okay, don't don't argue for the sake of arguing, but don't avoid talking to people about important things because you're scared of arguments, right? Or because you're scared of offending. Have assertive, solid conversations with people that need to be had, and then finally respect other people's emotions. Now, maybe what you're going through right now wouldn't make me sad or disappointed or hurt. But that doesn't mean I can't respect the fact that you're feeling that way now. Okay? Doing these things, the evidence is clear, is going to increase our, our likability, our referent power, and it's certainly going to uh, therefore increase or enhance that important part, that important fourth of our emotional intelligence. Okay? So again, we've gone through self-awareness, which leads to self-management, and empathy, which can lead to increased social skills. Right? We've briefly gone through things, but I want to encourage you to not have this be the last time you think about emotional intelligence. Read, read about it. See if, see if you buy it. Okay? See if it's a framework that helps you understand leadership capacity even more, or even if it might be useful to you in your personal life. I will tell you, I once did a training on this at, at, for a UDOT conference, and someone came up to me afterwards and said, you just did a lot of marriage counseling for me. So I know that there's application here besides the workplace, besides your formal leadership behaviors and, 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 and opportunities. Um, 